The outbreak began at Disneyland the week before Christmas. Of California's 68 cases so far, 48 are linked to Disneyland. California state epidemiologist warns if you are not vaccinated, stay away from Disneyland. Let us speak for a moment to those parents and guardians who will not vaccinate their child against the measles, those who believe the government is seeking to run your life, and those who for some unexplained reason are listening to the panicked cries from those who have zero dog in the fight and even less knowledge of the facts. What will it take to convince you that you are putting the health of your child and that of others at risk every single day? Let's get a few words from someone who deals with the potential youngest victims of any viral outbreak. He was chief of residence in pediatrics at the Interfaith Medical Center in Brooklyn, New York, past director of the Division of Pediatrics at St. Mary's Medical Center in West Palm Beach, Florida. Dr. Ronald Romare joins us today. Doctor, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. What do we say to these people when they are continually pushed? And again, maybe we're pushing too hard for some of these anti-vaxxers and people who don't want to get their kids. But what do you say to them that might get through to them? Um, I think the fact that measles is a terrible disease with a, a morbidity and mortality, and I think we have not seen it in decades. I think they have to understand that it is neglectful to put your kid at risk. But they don't get that. I mean, we tell them over and over again, and they say, the government doesn't run my kid. The CDC doesn't know what they're doing. The AMA doesn't have a clue what they're saying. And by the way, it's all just the drug companies that are pushing drugs on my child. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be the one to convince them. I think it's going to be the actual cases. And when the morbidity and mortality is stated by news organizations like yourself, I think then people are going to wake up. It's sad, but I do believe that's what it's going to take. What are you getting from parents and individuals right now when they come to talk to you? Or what are you hearing from them when they talk about this? Are they alarmed? Are they that concerned? Do they think they're being fed false information? Well, I think they were always alarmed. This is not new to us. Okay, the measles outbreak and the measles discussion is new, but the discussion on vaccines have been going on in pediatricians' offices for, for decades. It has increased and renewed vigor now that we have an actual outbreak. Mm -hmm. um, so parents are coming in. They are, they are confused, I think is the best word. What's a, what are they mostly confused about? I think some of the old data that has been already put to rest, one in particular about the connection between measles and autism. And that has been put to rest, that has been reneged, uh, the Lancet. Who that has been debunked, that has debunked, been thrown out. It has it been has thrown been, out. And let's say this so that everybody hears this very clinically and very clearly from you as a physician. The doctor and the people who pushed that were basing this on incorrect information and assumptions, and it is wrong. Exactly. And that, that's the news that needs to get out there ahead of everything else so that these folks who are relying on that to make this decision of not to vaccinate their kid would start you know waking up I, I, I believe that has to be done what else could they possibly be afraid of though because let's okay let's try this from the other side because there are parents who say that there's too many drugs being pumped into my kid I'm concerned about the schedule of putting the drugs in here and that it may trigger something else down the road how do you allay those fears well I mean we start with at least a conversation Someone who is willing to have a conversation about this, I'm willing to listen and I'm willing to inform. Um, the facts are that the schedule of vaccination has been the schedule for decades. It's the schedule all over the world. Uh, we are the only ones having questions about it. Actually, Cuba has a, a, a higher vaccination rate but than say, we do. Say that again. Cuba. <laughs> Cuba has a higher vaccination rate than America does. And do we not have to, and you as a physician, to point this out, that there are those who are alarming people saying that well it could be coming over the border with illegals i've done the research i can find it on the internet probably just as easy as anybody else that tells us that the south american nations by and large and people they are better vaccinated than american children yes they are yes they are there's there's some areas in, and i think that's the important point as well is that you have to know your risk in your area in your zip code mm -hmm. there are areas within america that the vaccination rate has fallen below the 90% that we're Northern looking Northern California for, for one of and them. And therefore you're, you know, approaching like Somalia when it comes to vaccinating. I'm going to ask you to, wait a minute, we're approaching Somalia? Yes. I am, in the rest of the world, the poor are not vaccinated. The rich usually get vaccinated. It is the reverse in America. It is the wealthy, it is the highly intelligent folk that choose not to vaccinate. And so, therefore, you have a risk that's going to be reverse. Is, okay. this, is this some sort of social need that they have to, to be superior to doctors? What is that? I, I don't think so. I think, 
I think really and truly is the success of vaccines. We have vaccinated so well in America over many decades that no one has seen these illnesses. Quite unlike other places where polio is still rampant in India, where, for example, I grew up in Trinidad, I had measles, I had chicken pox, and I had the mumps. I had the actual diseases, and I remember them. I was, <laughs> I was old enough to remember. Now, I don't know how many people my age in America can say that, other than chicken pox. Mm -hmm. I got about a minute or so left here. There are people right now who are watching this who say, well, I'm, I'm still sort of sitting on the fence. There are those people, and we've had them on the air, who say that those people who don't vaccinate their child, it is a form of child abuse. Would I, you agree I, with that? I, I wouldn't go as far as to say child abuse. I'll call it child neglect. I, I, think, I think they love their kids. I do believe. It, misguided love, perhaps? They're misguided love. I think they, they truly believe in protecting their kids. It's very emotional for them. And we have to get through the emotion with facts. So I'm quite willing for them to come in and have those discussions. And most of my pediatric colleagues, the problem is the one who does not want to have a discussion, the, does not want to listen to the facts. And that subgroup, yes, I believe is maybe uh, bordering on abuse. Should doctors who suggest to their patients that they not get the measles vaccine for reasons that are based on bad information, should they have their license removed? No, I don't think they should have their license removed, but I think uh, you, should, you should wonder why would any doctor want, you know, after we've taken an oath to protect and to heal, would put your kid in harm's way. I, that, that makes no sense to me. You haven't had any kids come in with the measles no. to your practice, have you? No. And you kind of cross yourself and say, thank goodness, every single day? Every day. Every, every day. single day. Doctor, I want to thank you because this is the kind of straight information that needs to be out there. Hopefully, we, if we convinced one person maybe to look a little bit deeper and find out a little bit more about it and save one life, I think that's an excellent thing that we've done. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank Thanks you so much for joining us. Thank All right. Uh, now, if you're a car junkie, there is only one place to be this weekend. One place and one place alone. We're going to head to the Windy City, and we're going to find someone that we see on a regular basis here at Midpoint, because there she is. Lauren Fix is at the Chicago Auto Show. She is standing in front of a car that she is not going to send to me, which, of course, she's probably breaking some kind of a vow there. You should have one ready. Lauren, you got five seconds. You all set and ready to go with the new cars? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of phenomenal vehicles here and a lot of good surprises, too. All right, there you go. Lauren Fix is live at the Chicago Auto Show, and that's where we're going next. I am getting the four on the floor ready. Stay with us, because this is where we question everything and occasionally have a good time, right here on Midpoint.